Well, 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 good evening, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> yes, he is. The Lord is good, and the Lord is worthy to be praised. This another day. The Lord has kept us another day. The Lord has smiled on us and been gracious unto us, kept us in a portion of health and strength. We're in our right minds. Hallelujah. Got a mind to want to serve the Lord like my grandmother used to say. Got a mind to run on to see what the end is going to be. My, 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 been a marvelous day here in the Cuyahoga County area of, uh, of Ohio. We are grateful to be able to experience another day of sunshine on this side. Hope you had a great day as well. Apologize for the tardiness in coming on, but I was uh, talking to someone who just had... Uh, experienced death in their family and they just got into word about it and I was talking to them about it. We want to pray for them this evening uh, and among the other prayer requests that we have, we want to keep them, thing, keep them lifted up before the Lord in prayer because God does still hear and God does answer prayer. Did you know God is real, beloveds? Did you know God is real, that his word is true, and that he does answer the prayers of his children? This is the confidence, the Bible says, that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us, and if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petition that we ask of him. Be anxious for nothing. Oh, I love this verse. Be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, always in an attitude of thanks. Let your request be made known unto the Lord and the peace of God, which cannot be explained. The Bible said, pass of all understanding, so keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, I love his word today, brothers and sisters. I hope you love the word of God. I hope you've tuned in with me this evening. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to we're going to be in Revelation as you know we are in the book of Revelation now, but we're going to go back over the chapter that we. Uh, talked about last week uh, simply because we had some uh, people to tell me that they did not know that that was the chapter uh, that talks about the, the rapture of the church, and they missed that when I was talking about it last week. So I want to talk about it again this evening. Plus, I had another incident that happened last week that uh, uh, caused me to want to duplicate again this week. So hopefully you'll not be too bored with going over some of the some of the same material. We'll have some new material, of course, but uh, we'll go back over some of the same material that we had on last week. All right. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, like a little kid, I get strangled real easy now. Okay. All right. I said, I hope this is, uh, you had a great day today and your week is starting off uh, with a big bang and you're looking forward to what God is going to do. Uh, had a good day and looking forward to what God is going to do for the rest of the week. Okay. I'm going to be on tomorrow evening also uh, under the St. Mary's Primitive Baptist Church out of Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, he wants me to do something for 
uh, that church and for him there in the Florida area. So if you all would uh, pray for me for that, I would appreciate it very much. That'll be 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow evening, okay? All right, let us uh, draw our minds in to have a little talk with the Lord, uh, if we will. Hope you had a good day yesterday. Hope the word was helpful to you on yesterday. All right. Okay, but let's uh, take a few moments now to pray. Father, thank you for um, this opportunity. <coughs> this opportunity to share. <coughs> I pray, God, that you give me clarity of thought, clear up my vocals, get my lungs pumping right, so I'll be able to share your word. We know the enemy is always on his job trying to hinder your program, keeping, helping, and, and, and keeping, trying to keep your kingdom from being advanced. But God, I know you've got all power in your hands. <clears throat> and, can, and he can't do any more than what you allow him to do. That is the confidence I have in you. But anyway, Father, I ask you right now to help me to make this presentation of your word this evening from the uh, ex exposition of chapter four in the book of Revelation. I pray, God, that you give us ears to hear what the Spirit would say uh, to us. I pray, God, that your anointing will be present. I pray for the bereaved. I pray for the sick this evening. I pray especially for the young lady I was just communicating with and for her family, Lord. I pray, God, that you would keep them, Lord, that somehow or another you will get glory out of this tragedy that occurred in their lives. God, you know all about them, and you know what they need at this time. Please be with them. Have mercy on them, Lord. But not only them, Father, but there are many others that are bereaved this evening. God, remember Mother Prater as she still mourns the loss of her husband. Be with her in a very special way, I pray. I pray, God, for others all over the land and country. I pray for those who are yet losing loved ones because of this COVID-19. God, I pray that you give uh, comfort and give uh, some the uh, means of uh, joy in the midst of their sorrow. God, give them peace in the midst of their storm that they might be able to endure these losses. Remember our president. Remember President Duke, Lord, in Florida as he mourns the loss of his mother. Lord, you know you just took his wife a few days ago and now you've taken his mother. And so, God, you know he needs you, and I pray that you'll be there for him. Oh, God, we need you. We need you on every hand, not only for this bereaved, bereaved but we need you because there are those who are sick, Lord. There are those who are in pain, Lord. There are those who are hurting. Be with them, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally. Be with them, oh, God. These families that are being victims of Random shootings, Lord. Loved ones are being shot down less than human. Lord, would you be with these family members? God, you know all about it. You know where they are, and you know what they're going through. God, we thank you that you're real and that you hear us when we, answer, when we ask you uh, for help. You know we are needy people now here. Guide us and direct us and all that we say and do, God, that we might truly be considered and be known as your children. And we thank you, Father, in advance for your answers to this prayer and for what you're going to do. For I ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake I humbly pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Let us get moving here on our study for this evening. It comes from Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And um, I think I need to read that uh, chapter to us again. Uh, just for the sake of 
refreshing our minds on what we're talking about from the Word of God. That is Revelation chapter 4. Uh, I need some light over here, too. Down here, I can see it there. All right. Revelation chapter 4. That's what I can see right here. After this, after this, John says, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was that, as if it were of trumpets talking with me, which says, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. <clears throat> and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were even lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal in the midst of the throne and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like, like a calf and the third beast like a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not night, day, nor and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and which was to come, which is to come. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou has created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and was created. Amen. Chapter 4 of uh, the book of Revelation. Amen. <clears throat> all right. I'm going to try to, pardon, pardon me, pardon me. Oh, <laughs> I thought I had sneeze. <laughs> hmm. The enemy messing with me, you see. <laughs> oh, I did. I did have sneeze. <laughs> have mercy, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Uh, pardon me. Please forgive me. I don't know why I'm being so attracted to you. All right, but I want to take my time and we're getting ready to move forward. Okay, this verse, this verse, this verse, this chapter, uh, this verse uh, that we've just read, the, the very first verse of Revelation chapter 4. We are to correctly interpret the divisions 
of the book of Revelation, uh, we must understand what's happening right here in this very first verse. It says, after these things, okay? Uh, there's a division that references a vision there. And there are three divisions in the book of Revelation. Chapter one, okay? Chapter two and three, and then chapter four through 22. I'm gonna say it again. There's the three divisions three divisions of the book of Revelation. You got chapter one, and that's what, it's, it's what it, it references uh, uh, chapter one and says, and, and these things that have, 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 that have come, come to pass, these things that have passed. And then he talks about the present, which was uh, Revelation two, and three chapters two and three and then you got the future which is revelation four and 22 and what we've talked about so far in the first uh three chapters have been things that have already okay passed all right now we pick up chapter four and and we'll go through chapter 22 but all these things are future to us. Chapter four is actually when the church leaves this world, when you and I leave this world in what's called the rapture. I'll, I'll get into it and explain it again a little later. But first of all, I want to reference another verse in uh, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19 because uh, that verse is the key verse to the whole book. And it, unlocks, it unlocks the door of our understanding what the Spirit was revealing unto John in this book. And if we miss, if we miss this verse, Okay, we've missed the leadership of the Holy Spirit in helping us to understand uh, the rest of the book. Verse, 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 chapter one, verse 19. Keys opens the door, okay, to understand the entire, entire book because it talks about the past, talks about the present, and then it talks about the future, okay? And if we missed uh, verse 19 of uh, chapter 1, we miss the significance of the book of Revelation. All right? And, and we're going to be off course as we go through it. So here we go. Here we go. Uh, as I say, verse 19 is a transitional verse. Uh, it, it says, the things which are to take place Okay, now, after the rapture, that's where we are. And the Greek term is meta, ta, 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 mm. let me see, I always have to take my time to say the Greek. Meta, ta, 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 meta, ta, 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 which means after these things, meta, ta, ta, ta after these things. Last word of chapter three until chapter 19, okay? Um, this, this, is a, uh, this verse is a type, type and shadow, if you will, verse, a, a verse of the rapture. John, John represents the caught up crowd caught up, the, the believers that's going to be caught up. And there must be a rapture here. If uh, if not, our theology is messed up throughout the whole teaching of the book. So we see 
the significance of that verse, first of all, or the verse that say after these things, and then we see nextly in this chapter, and we move forward, the symbolism of the verse. Revelation 1 and 1, it says, signified, there's symbols in this book. There's a lot of symbolism in the book of Revelation. And you got to follow the symbols in order to get to the right understanding of what John is saying. All right. Now, remember, it's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it causes us a little labor, a little work, okay, in, in studying Revelation. But John said, remember, he said, just reading the book, <laughs> you get a blessing. Much less study it and getting into what the blessings and the promises of the book, just reading it, he says, there's blessings associated with it. And so we see the symbols, as John already told about in chapter one. We see uh, a symbol of sight, open doors, amen, the third time, all right? And we see these doors that uh, John's talking about. Uh, there, there's all kinds of doors that the Bible tells us about as it is, is here in Revelation. Revelation 3 and 8 talks about the door of opportunity. Revelation 3 and 8. Okay? Revelation 3 and 8, 3, 320. Revelation 320 talks about the door of salvation. He says, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open unto me, I'll come in, sup with him and he with me. That's the door of salvation. Uh, in, in Revelation 3.8, we're talking about the door of opportunity. Okay? I, I open doors and no man can close and close them, and no man can open them. But then you got in Revelation 4.1, we have the door of deliverance, the door of deliverance, that door which will be standing open for the church to come on up, all right? I don't know about any of you all, but I, I you know, I ain't begging God to take me out of here, but when God gets ready for me to go, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kicking and screaming trying to stay in this world, okay? And so, that's a door that's opening. It's a door of deliverance to deliver us out of this world, to be absent from this body. You know what it says. It means to be present with the Lord. And then you got the door that uh, is, is referenced uh, uh, as, as Jesus being the, the, the one that's being referenced because he said, Jesus is the only door in Revelation 10, 9 and John 14, 6. He says, I am the door and no man, no man can come up to me except he comes by me. Now that's, that's the door that Jesus is uh, symbols of, of, of by. He's a symbolism of the door um, of salvation. Uh, you, you know what uh, uh, Romans 10 and 9 says? Okay, if you will confess with your mouth <clears throat> the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God and raised him from the dead, thou shalt be, <laughs> <clears throat> thou shalt be saved. All right, okay, so that's another door. Now, the door of salvation is open. It's open now, hallelujah. You know, we can give out an invitation for people to come to unite with Christ, to get, become a part of the church of Jesus Christ, to become a part of the kingdom of God. That door is open right now, the door of salvation. But that door will close. 
Yes, it will. That door will close according to uh, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. That door is going to close. And when that door is closed, no man can get in. No man, no woman, no girl, no boy will be able to get in. And so right now the door of salvation is open. But one day is going to close. So we see in Revelation the symbolism as it talks about the door, doors, doors, the door is open to receive the saints home here in this fourth chapter. The door is open to receive the saints home here in the fourth chapter of Revelation. All right. And then as a symbol of doors <clears throat> I've talked about, but now we look at the symbol of sounds. John says, I heard a voice telling me to come up, but it sounded like a trumpet. The trumpet was talking to John. Lord have mercy. Is a trumpet going to talk to us one day? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is a trumpet going to talk to us? In First Thessalonians chapter 4, that trump of God is going to sound, and, and the dead in Christ is going to rise. Y'all know what that verse talks about. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, the trumpet is going to sound, and the church is going to be raptured up out of this world. So John hears the sound of a trumpet. And that trumpet was talking to him, okay, telling him to come up. It's going to be a trumpet down here telling us to get up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verses 15 through 50, I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 52 says, uh, talks still about the rapture. And it says, we shall be changed in a moment. Those who are, uh, 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 are here when the actual rapture occurs, he said, we're going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Those of us that remain shall be caught up to meet the rest of them in there. Okay? <clears throat> but that's Revel uh, that's First Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 51 through 52. And we hear the, hear the voice saying to John, Come up hither. Come up. Come up hither. Which is the call of authority. When that, when that trumpet sounds and it calls us, we're going. It's going to be a call of authority. Okay? Just like Jesus called Lazarus from the grave, all right? It was a call of authority. He had to get up. <laughs> yeah, he did. He had to get up from the grave when God called him in John chapter 11, verse 43. John had to get, uh, Lazarus had to get up when Jesus called him. Yes, he did. And so we see it. The voice of authority. And we see it as an escape. Okay, that voice offers us escape. An escape from what? Escape from the tribulation that's about to take place on this earth. Seven years tribulation shall occur after the church is raptured up out of here. All right? First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine. I say First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine. Amen. No tribulation for the church, but this world is going to see times unlike they've never seen before. And so, thank God for the church that's going to be raptured. Right here in chapter 4, after these things, I heard a voice. John says, it sounds like a trumpet saying, come up hither. 
<laughs> okay? And we're going to be caught up. We're going to be snatched away, okay, According, uh, which implies uh, the rapture. It's going to be a haste, hasty rescue. The church will be rescued from impending doom. We'll be rescued from the tribulational period that's going to take place. All hell is going to break loose. Now, you got to be an ostrich with your head in the sand not to see that what's going on right now in our world is the stage being set for the tribulation to occur. With all of the stuff that's happening in this world, with all of the hatred, with all of the racism, with all the killings, with all of the uh, frustrations, no moral uh, standard any longer, you know, no no moral, uh, no values, you know, anything goes, you know, people lie, like, you know, lie is not even been uh, told us in the word not to do. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, the Bible says, that we are not to bear false witness, okay? And, and, and other places about, uh, tells us about lying too in Galatians. But uh, man, people lying there like, you know, like, it ain't nothing to it. That's what you're supposed to do. I mean, the moral compass in this country, in this world, is crazy. It is crazy. And so we are living in terrible times. But what I'm trying to say is that points to the picture of what's going to happen during the tribulation. Okay? You don't have standards. You don't have uh, the police out of control. Anything goes. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, what do they call that? When everybody's doing what they want to do. And that's what's happening in this world. Everybody's doing what's right in their own sight. And man, this world is going crazy, topsy turvy crazy. But thank God, brothers and sisters, my fellow Christians, my fellow believers, we will be out of here. Okay, they they can do what they want to do, <laughs> uh, but we will, uh, according to the promise of the word, we will escape. The church has promised that we will escape Revelation 3 and 11. We will escape this violent world. Now, now in, even in the Old Testament, uh, there are types and symbols of the rapture. Okay? Now, now this is in the Old Testament. you got uh, e e uh, Enoch. Remember Enoch? In, in, in Genesis chapter 5, where uh, he was just walking along, and all of a sudden, poof, <laughs> he was he was out of here. He was gone. God took him. That's what the Bible says. God took him, and he just went straight up. That was a type of the rapture. Enoch was a type of the rapture in the Old Testament. Then you have Noah. Uh, in uh, Genesis chapter 6 and uh, through uh, chapter 9 uh, when uh, when uh, God uh, uh, had no one to build that up which protected them from the destruction of the 40 days of rain 40 days and 40 nights of rain God protected them that was a type of the rapture God protected them from the destruction to come, type of rapture. Then you had Lot in Genesis chapter 19, okay? Uh, Genesis chapter 19 is when Sodom and, Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because all of the sexual perversion, all of the wickedness that was going on, sinfulness, wickedness that was going on there, 
And uh, you remember, Abraham said, Lord, if I can find uh, a, a, a 10, will you spare the city? Uh, five, will you spare the city? If I can find two. Couldn't find nobody. And, and God destroyed the whole city except for Lot and his wife, okay? Lot got out, Lot's wife got out, but she looked back, so I don't know if she really survived or not. But uh, they all left the city and God destroyed it, okay? But God gave them a means by which they could have escaped uh, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Such is the case of what God is going to do for the church. God has given us a means by which we can get out of here, and we're going to be raptured out after these things here in chapter 4. And we have proof positive that these things are going to occur. I could give you a bunch of scripture, but I don't think it's necessary. And of course, the outline that I'm following tonight is still the same outline that was uh, on the Facebook page last week. I'm following the same outline, okay? And so uh, we're going to go up in the rapture, and in so doing, uh, we will be experiencing heaven, amen, as John is describing it, and he's talking about it here in chapter 4, all right? We're going to experience heaven, uh, as it's talked about in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 9. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. That's that's heaven, brothers and sisters. That's what God has prepared for us. We're going to be raptured up to that. And then we got Revelation 21 and 4. Revelation 21 4, he says, And God shall wipe away all tears. From their eyes, there'll be no more crying. That's what he says. Be no more crying, no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. Okay? God is going to take us up out of this place and put us in a, another place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got something to look forward to. And according to Revel, uh, John, St. John chapter 11 verses 25 and 26, we're going to live forever together with God. He that, he that, he that is dead, uh, he that liveth and is dead, yet shall he live. That's what the scripture says. All right. And then as we move forward in our study uh, this evening, we come to uh, uh, the the throne throne chapter, which is here in chapter four. Throne chapter, okay. Things look different from a heavenly perspective. That is true in every area of every area of life. All right. Everyone wants to go to heaven and. Nobody necessarily wants to die, <laughs> as the saying. But here's a scene that will take us into heaven itself and will allow us to look at things that are going on there. John was caught up in heaven, verse 1. And uh, we want to see what John saw uh, when he was caught up. And here's where we uh, see a scene that defies uh Description, really. The symbolism here is beyond us. Uh, when Jesus describes a vine, we understand it. When he describes bread, we understand it. When he describes water and wind, all, all those natural things. But here in this chapter, we're confronted with an emerald rainbow that, that makes a complete circle. You see what he's saying? with strange people and animals. We, we, we went in another realm, brothers and sisters. We're in another realm now. We've been caught up. We're in the heavenlies. <clears throat> We're in the heavenlies now. And 
we got to rely on the Holy Spirit to uh, reveal to us what is actually, what we're seeing and what's actually taking place. So let's look at the throne chapter, verses uh, two and three. It, it, we see the sovereign on the throne. And you know who the sovereign is. I don't have to tell you that. The glory of seeing God on his throne is what we're going to see when we're caught up. There are three facts that reveal about God. First of all, his stability, his ability in his government. Nothing or no one can overturn God's government. Psalms 47 and 6 talks about that. Psalms 47 and 6 and uh, Psalms uh, 45 and 6 talks about it. You, we see the sovereignty, sovereignty of God. I'm sorry, not sovereignty, but this is under the sovereignty of God. But we see the stability of God under the sovereignty of God. And now we see the, the symbolism of God, his glory, right? John tries to do the impossible. He tries to explain to us what he's seeing in heaven and what's taking place in heaven. And, God, and, and John has no means. He has no frame of reference to help us to understand what he's seeing because these things he's never seen before. These are heavenly things. These are things uh, uh, which is above earthly. So here it is. Uh, he sees, first of all, Jasper. He sees Jasper. Jasper is hard and inflexible. It's clear, but it's unchangeable. It's firm. And that describes the government of God. God is unchangeable. You know what Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, I think, 13, 8 says? It says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is inflexible. God just don't uh, 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 bow and bend to in and everything. God is is firm, okay? God is unchangeable. Yes, he is. And it describes his government. Amen. The Lord, the Lord is solid. He's sound. He's sure. He's stable in his government. And uh, just like he is when he created the uh uh, the, 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 the world and uh, fixed uh, various uh, uh, objects in the world. I mean, they established. I mean, when he fixed the universe, he established it. Gravity, he established it. You can't change gravity. He established it, fixed it firmly, okay? Uh, thermo, uh, thermodynamics, that's what I'm about to say, yeah. Thermodynamics. I like thermodynamics because listen, but God fixed God fixed it that way. God fixed thermodynamics, meaning that nothing stays the same. Everything in this world is changing. <laughs> he fixed it, even though he's firm and fixed in in certain of his realities, there's some things that he's made that it does not remain the same, okay? We are in a mode of changing. We are constantly on the move. That's why I have a problem with church folk who always want to do the same thing over and over and over and over again, never change, you know, just same old, same old, same old, same old. Listen, Ain't nothing in this world meant to be like that. Everything is changing. But here's my problem. The problem is we don't want to. We don't want to function like that. We want to ad adhere to that principle that God placed in this world, except as it relates to the church and uh, the kingdom of God. We okay? Yeah. We want. We want. We want to change. Our, our clothing, we want to go with the fans, we want to change cars, 
you know, we don't stick with T models. We want to change as things are changing in society, change our hairdo, you know, change our shoes, you know, change our houses. We change everything, but we want to lead the church like it started uh, 50 years ago. <laughs> And I'm being kind when I say that. But everything is changing. You know? No, you don't you don't change the master. The master is gonna be the same. That's part of, like I said, the stability of God. The Jesus is gonna always be the savior of the world. He remains the same. We adhere to Jesus. We we say that he is. He, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way, not a way. He is the way. Jesus is the way to heaven. We don't change the master, okay? We, we, don't, we don't change that. We, but we do change the methodology. You know, how we do it. We've got to change. Uh, change some stuff. We can't do evangelism today. The way we did it 20 years ago, the way we did it 30 years ago, we got to change it, okay? If we're going to be effective for Jesus and effective for the kingdom, they got to change some things. Hallelujah. Okay, here I am getting off in a preaching mode. <laughs> I got to back out of it, okay? We change methodology, but we don't change the master, okay? And Jesus fixed it that way with uh, thermodynamics and things of that nature. His moral laws are just, is, is just, and they are stable, okay? Just like his rules. And he rules and will rule, the Bible says, Psalms 2 and 9, with a rod of iron. Then we see uh, another precious metal here, and it's uh, sardine. Sardine is blood red, fashion. Flashing, fire, uh, fiery, speaks of the holiness of God. Um, yes, it does. And, and the fires of Israel on the altar many years ago uh, was to never go out. Israel was to keep those fires burning at all times on the altar, which was uh, the perpetuality of, uh, of, of that which was to remind Israel of their own wickedness, of their own sin, and how God is holy, and as long as there is sin in their universe, his anger will burn against them. Amen. But <clears throat> that was just to remind them, and so it is with the Sardin, Sardin stone. Uh, it, 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 it speaks of the holiness of God. God is holy. He says in First Peter, I think, First Peter uh, 1 and 5, I believe, something like that. He says, be ye holy as God is holy. God is holy. You may see the human side. This seems pretty tough, but it's a picture of one who, who will judge the world. <laughs> I ain't going to get into that. Uh, but uh, this is about the judgment of God. Amen. And God will judge, okay? He, he, well, he has judged us. He has judged us, and, but he will judge us at the Bema seat, okay? At the rapture, he'll judge us, okay? But he will not be judging us to go to hell or heaven. Our judgment will already take place. Our judgment took place in Jesus on the cross. And that's why when we accept Jesus, uh, uh, our judgment will have passed. Amen. But then we see the serenity of God, his grace. Right now, we only see ha half, okay, half of what God has done. But we'll see all <clears throat> when we're in heaven before him. We'll see it all. According to 1 Corinthians 13, 12, we shall see all, oh, amen. We only see right now, First uh, Corinthians 13 said, we see through a glass darkly, but then we're going to see face 
the face, okay? And it's symbolized by uh, the fact that we'll see a whole rainbow. Right now on this earth, we only see a part of the beginning of a rainbow. We never see the end. But when we get to heaven, we're going to see the whole rainbow, the beginning and the end. And then verse 4 talks about the saints around the throne, 24 elders. They are symbolic of all the uh, redeemed of the ages, 12 Old Testament, 12 New Testament. Then we see the promise fulfilled, 2 Timothy 2.12. Uh, then we see a position finalized spiritually seated. Uh, the Bible said we are with Jesus in heavenly places, according to Ephesians 2 and 10, okay? But we will literally be uh, there someday, uh, and we will be literally seated with Christ in heavenly places, but right now, symbolically. Then we're going to wear white raiment, okay? Uh, and you know, white raiment rep represents purity and righteousness. And only when we clothed in the righteousness of Jesus will we have merit to be in heaven. Then there's going to be crowns of gold, okay, at the judgment seat, FEMA seat, uh, crowns where we'll have, will be issued for our services that we'll be able to lay at the feet of, of the Lord. Okay, hopefully you'll have something to lay at the master's feet. I wish I had time to talk about that one. But then uh, verses 5 through 11 in the fourth chapter uh, is the songs before the throne. Okay, uh, yeah, verse 5 is a picture of the approaching judgment, thunder, lightning, uh, tornado. <laughs> okay, picture of judgment. Verse 5b, seven lamps, Holy Spirit in all of his uh, completeness. Holy Spirit in all of his completeness, which will no longer be needed uh, as it is needed down here, okay? The Holy Spirit will have an, another function at that particular time. You know, no, no longer be needed as a comforter, but he'll be an instrument of judgment. Verse 6a, Talked about the seer of glass, finality. God's judgment is found. No more pills. Okay. Natural sea changes, fluctuates, but this sea cannot change. All right. Then verses four and four through eight, you had the four beasts. The four beasts, four what well, represent the world. All right. Four is a number that represents the world. Are you walking with me? Okay. Seasons, compass. Beast represents all created life. Lion represents the wild. Calf, uh, uh, the domesticated. Man, the intelligent. Eagle, the birds. Each represents a different side, okay, of the Lord. Then you got the four gospels. Uh, the lion, Matthew, uh, the calf, Mark, man, Luke, eagle, John, to be uh, all to be near him and to be like him. <clears throat> the wind symbolized, uh, uh, symbolizes the swiftness of his service. All creation is quick to praise him and glorify the Lord, which is a picture of of unceasing praise to the Lord. Verses 9 through 11 is celebration, all right? When the beast glorifies the Lord, the church begins to worship. Heaven will resound with the praise of Jesus. Every time the 24 elders appear in the revelation, they are falling on their faces and praising Almighty God. And so that's two things that we need to do. Amen. Uh, uh, get ready to do anyway. <laughs> we need to begin to praise him now so that we can be ready when we are caught up. Oh, caught up <laughs> to meet the Lord in the air. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Something just hits me every now and then. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I don't know when it's going to be. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. I don't know. But when he comes, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go up and be a part of this heavenly crowd. Hallelujah. Yes, I want to have some crowns to be able to cast at the Savior's feet. I want to see the nail prints in his hand, spikes in his feet. I want to see, amen, uh, the crown of thorns on his head. I want to see, he said, well, he's, he's not that no more. I know he's not, but I, since I know, as I'm known, I'm going to know all things, and I'll know what he looks like. <laughs> Y'all ain't with me. <laughs> but I'll know it, and I'll see it all. I'll see him for myself. Hallelujah to his name. And that's what Revelation 21, I think in 4, 21 and 9 says, says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. That's what he said. Let him hear what the Spirit say. I hope you're hearing what the Spirit is saying to you this evening. He said, because in, 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 in Revelation 21, he said, we're going to see his face. We're going to see his face. Amen. Because nobody can see his face now and live. But then we're going to see his face. And we're going to worship because he alone is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I got to go. I got to go. I know I, I guess I went over tonight. I guess I went over. But it's all right. <laughs> all the time belonged to the master. I was a little late coming on. God bless you. Hope you have a good one. See you tomorrow evening, maybe. <laughs> Uh, if not, we'll see you back here on Wednesday, same station, same place, all right? Love you. Be blessed. Be safe. Good night to all.